Well, that's a bummer. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Um, so I talked to the D and D person, found out about everything that was going on there. Um, I, um, went and reported back to the lady. She didn't believe me. She thought everything was evil. I went to talk to the guy. I got the key to the garbage. I went through the garbage. Um, and that, whole conversation went in crazy direction. I'm not going to repeat it here. So, uh, let's continue. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close, there is, for precisely one more, 15 pages near that. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Sadly, the ledger only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental event. The ledger only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It will do. Bill, the lieutenant, looks at his blue notebook. Two fat, shiny pens hang from the bind. He is not really saying anything. Just standing there, looking at them. Know that I give this to you with resentment. Resentment? The tasks you've completed flow out of the blue oblong pen in a brash freehand uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The word inspect the victim's body, interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. You're a swashbuckler with that pen, Harry, and it feels good. Feels like completion. Things to be done and things already done. The composition of reality. No, actually. Any ideas? Hmm. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from you. Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. 41 is your precinct. It's safe to say those are the initials of the officer responsible for the case. Your initials. Feeling isn't really the jurisdiction we <laughs> It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Wait, oh, so this is going to end up like uh, cost, costing me the day. It's relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito, nay, a mural, appears on an eight story tenement overlooking Central Jam. Cause of failure rent too high. Uh. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are true love is possible only in the next world for new people. It is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal. Citing <coughs> public support for conservation. This le the 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins, a staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority. And that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. 
and it is too late for us. In any case, it appears to have been a rare case of civil activity. Okay, well, the these will give me more experience points, as well. but uh, let's Not keep going. Changed in the meanwhile. We'll probably get back to it. Sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out. Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls and the bottommost are field autopsy forms each is easy enough to make sense of you don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work a dozen pages of thin copy paper bright red in color a monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real severe but they appear pleasantly vague these are quite sinister in turn they give a date all in a print so small it could be considered. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and have the rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copier paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat <laughs> The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Something rattles inside, and something small inside. Light, permeables, it's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. With your hands, you four sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. It is not what you end Oh, up. man. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open. But nothing happens. The ledger quivers in your hand as it the acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now, you know, like the bits they put into public piss bowls, probably called Fermi Discreet or Axel or something. At some point in it, remember when I said the smell of the upstairs bathroom was so rank they should have sent a poet to describe it? Why, yes, it is. Among many other things. This cleaning tablet is used by the whirling in rags. Perhaps that's where the ledger was dropped in the toilet. By you. The lieutenant observes you, raising and lowering the toilet waterlogged mass under your nose. Excuse me, I just have to ask again. How did it get in the trash? Okay, good. But why? Okay, no problem. Okay, so I, I can come back to it later. Got a pen now. Um, okay. Let's go. Talk to the main guy. Oh yeah, and go to the his car and turn it on. Uh, look at the thing. Man, I'm bummed. I was playing for like half an hour and I can't believe I forgot to hit record. There's some pretty epic answers that they made him give when um, Gart asked me if uh, Sylvia had replied. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. A All right, ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds per minute gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Canadian comes to life like a leopard waking from its sleep. The lights unfold with a little click, casting. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Revachol West. Around the borders of the watermark 
are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst... Ah, Martinez. Let me see. Right here. No, it does not. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. The first row has 18 dots. The next is the longest. It runs all the way around. You count 216 perforations. Considering that nice, large number, a wave of pride washes over you. Though you can't say why, precisely. The last row has three perforations. That's it. Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Yes, that does seem quite likely. Your youth coincided with some heady days for Revachol. But let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see, wow, more than 200. It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. Call it what you want. You were a valuable member of your precinct. Now, let's look at the last row. Right, those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Yes. Everyone has their own method of coping, some more effective or self-destructive than others. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves. The lieutenant nods. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. You can now see your statistics on your journal page to the right. All right, so I've earned something else. And where was it that I was able to... Oh, endurance, I think, was let me redo one of the uh, challenges, I think. Okay, cool. I like this map, it looks really cool. Alright, um, these are tasks related to the, these are found, these are found white checks. Those on white are available to try right now, right now. Oh, okay, so I could redo some of these. Let's go talk to the dude. That'll probably be the last thing I do for this session. There's a new guy in here. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. 
You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your drink on and your act together. This guy still has a stupid bird. Can I help you? Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. The trash collection service? CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you, anyway. Yes? What thing? Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings, dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. <laughs> He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just what? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. Your body is ready, sire. Another thing. Great. I love those. Yes. Let's talk to this person here in the corner. So now it's repeating. Oh, there's someone here that wasn't here before. Or maybe he wasn't. I didn't notice him over the booth.
colorful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabiner. Mm. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. It's a dock worker's ID, doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young oh boy, if I feel this, I'm going to be upset. Stays back at you. Your fingers yes. find their way into the shackle, flicking open its spring-loaded gate. The man emits a loud snore. Is he about to wake up? Doesn't look like it, but you never know. Better be quick. You slip the plastic ID card out of the loop and pocket it, just for the record. You look nothing. You find a black paper note with a woman's profile on it. Seems like I think I think that means I have enough money for the yum yum money. Think of all the, the sleeping dock worker has little to say about your actions. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. Okay. You <laughs> look looking at like just so you know, that's funny. Maybe I can like flash it really quickly or something, or it'll take like a lot of checks to uh, make it work. But I think I've got enough ice. I didn't ask her how much it was, but I think I have enough now. Um. All right. Uh. Look at the map really quickly here. All right. Well, this has been Eric playing um, Disco Elysium. Sorry, I missed a bit of it. I'm sorry for myself. Sorry, you guys didn't get to see it. Either way, we'll see you next time. Bye.